All right, guys, real quick. Um, today's lesson is going to be over estimating crowds. So we're going to, by the end of today, what we want to be able to do is use proportional uh, ratios and proportions to try and solve problems. Um, now, real quick, we got a little bit of a warm up. I want you to complete questions one and two as a warm up, and then so pause your video, come back, and then we'll talk about it. Okay, so question one, it says determine the following conversions. Um, one foot, how many inches are in one foot? Well, we got 12 inches in one foot. How many feet are in one yard? We got three feet in one yard. How many feet are in one mile? We got 5,280 feet for every one mile. And now it's asking us to use these conversions to be able to calculate uh, the following. So it says, how many feet is 47 inches? Well, okay, let's look at this. We've got 47 inches, and we're trying to convert it to feet. So I'm going to put one foot over here. How many feet, uh, inches are in a foot? Because we're working with two different units of measure here. I want to try and get the same unit of measure so that way it makes it easier for me, right? So how many inches are in that foot? Well, we said that one foot is equal to 12 inches, right? So this one foot is the same thing as 12 inches. And notice here, we've got a fraction right here, a fraction right here. This is basically a fraction because it's over one. Um, and I'm trying to convert these 47 inches into feet. Notice. What I'm going to do, I'm going to multiply these two sides, okay? So I've got 47 times 1, that gives me 47. 1 times 12 gives me 12. And in terms of the unit of measures, you see how we have an inch up here and an inch down here. Well, when you have two of the same thing on the numerator and denominator, they cancel out, right? And so we're left with just feet. So 47 over 12 feet, which is the same thing as 3.9 feet, or 3 feet 11 inches. Okay. Um, and the next one, how many feet is 10 yards? So we're starting with 10 yards. And then we're trying to convert it into uh, feet, right? Well, how many uh, feet are in one yard? We've got three feet for every one yard. And you'll notice that, see in this first one, 2A, we started with inches up here and then inches down here. And see how they're the same? Same thing applies here. We got 10 yards up here, one yard down here. So I got, uh, and I'm just going to do the same thing. These yard, yards cancel, and I'm left with 10 times 3 gives me 30 over 1 feet. Oops. So 30 over 1 feet or 30 feet. And so what we're left with is 10 yards is the same thing as 30 feet. Okay. All right. So what we've been working with here is what's called proportions. Okay. A proportion is just two ratios uh, set equal to each other. You might have heard this term in geometry, uh, where we did a whole unit on ratios and proportions. Um, but a ratio is just, or excuse me, a proportion is just two ratios set equal to each other. Now, a ratio is just another word for a fraction. So A over B. Now, let's say if I set that, this is a ratio. Now, if I set this equal to, say, x over y, this is a proportion, okay? So as an example, let's do a couple right here. It says, uh, example, a jar that is 75 cubic inches will hold 17 large gumballs. Students, as a reminder, one... Okay, so as an example, we've got a jar that is 75 cubic inches will hold 17 large gumballs. How many large gumballs would a jar that is 300 cubic inches hold? So remember, we want to do this using uh, a proportion. So if we have a jar that is 75 cubic inches holding 17 large gumballs, 
what I'm going to do is I can create um, a proportion using this as one of the ratios. So I've got 17 gumballs is equal to 75 cubic inches, right? Well, how many gumballs? It says how many large gumballs? We don't know how many. Fills in 300 cubic inches. Okay, so what we can do, I'm going to create a ratio using this one and a ratio using this one. So I can have 17 gumballs over 75 cubic inches. This is one ratio, is equal to, since we don't know how many gumballs are in the other one, I'm just going to put X. On bottom, we've got 300 cubic inches. And I can start cross multiplying just like we did in question two in order to, or excuse me, um, well actually no, this is question two, the next one. Um, but 17 gumballs, 75, x over 300, we're going to do what's called cross multiplying. So if I look at, here let me change color, uh, cross multiply, we're going to multiply 17 times 300, 75 times x. So we got uh, 75 times x is going to give us 75x. 17 times 300, that's going to give us 5,100. And if we solve for x, so 75 times x, to get x by itself, I'm going to divide by 75, divide by 75. So we've got x is equal to, well, 5,100 divided by 75, that gives us 68. So in the end, a jar that has 300 cubic inches in size can hold 68 gumballs. All right, so next example. Uh, this one's talking about estimating large crowds. So it says estimating the number of people in a large crowd. By the way, these notes were created by Miss Duff um, over in over at South Forsyth High School. She's a really big uh, Justin Timberlake fan. Um, so estimating the number of people in a large crowd is quite challenging and often leads to controversies. One method sometimes used on a focus uh, used is to focus on a small section of the crowd, such as a rectangular area. So it's asking us make a rect uh, or excuse me make a square measuring five feet by five feet, and have your friends stand inside as if they are watching um, a show at the Roxy. It says count the number of your friends that comfortably fit in the rectangle and find the ratio of number of this number to the rectangle's area. Explain in your own words what this ratio means. So let's say for example, uh, instead of actively trying to find the number of people that can comfortably fit in there. Um, we're going to give an example, but first what I want to do, I'm going to say x is equal to the number of people per square foot. This is the magic number we're trying to find. We're trying to find the number of people per square foot that fit in this 5 foot by 5 foot square, right? Well, I'm also going to say x is equal to the number of people divided by square footage. Okay, that's how you get uh, density like this, right? Number of people per square foot. It's a ratio between the number of people divided by square footage. Okay, so as an example, let's say there are 15 people. Um, in the square. So 15 people in square. Okay. Uh, if I'm trying to find the population density or this, the density of this square, okay, first I want to imagine this five foot by five foot square. So five feet by five feet. And I've got 15 people in here. So I've got 15 people in here. What is the population density? Um, well, I know that the density is the number of people divided by square footage, right? So I've got x is equal to number of people, well we said 15 people, divided by square footage. Well if I have a 5 foot by 5 foot square, that's the same, it's square footage is 5 times 5 or 25 square feet, right? Okay, so that means that the square footage is 25. So x is equal to 15 over 25, or 0.6 people 
per square foot. Okay. So our population density in this example is 0.6 people per square foot. And it's asking us in the next part, use this value to estimate the size of a crowd 10 feet deep on both sides of a street standing along a one mile section of a parade. So it's saying that there are crowds on each side of a street and each rectangular crowd is 10 feet deep and one mile wide. Okay, so there's one set of people. Here's the road. And then here's the other set of people. And again, this one is 10 feet by one mile. Okay, so if I'm trying to find the number of people here, then what I can do is look at, first look at one side. So I've got area of one side. Okay. So the area, now look, I've got measurements in both miles and feet. So what I want to do is I want to convert all of these units of measure to the same thing. I can't use miles and feet in the same problem. So what I want to do, I'm going to convert miles into feet. And to find the area of this side, well, the area of a rectangle is base times height, right? So I've got, well, what's one mile in feet? That's 5,280 times height, which is uh, 10. So the area of one of these uh, rectangles is 5,000, or excuse me, 52,800 square feet. Okay. Um, now, I have to find the area of both sides, okay, as well as the number of people on each side. So if I'm looking at the number of people, let's do this, number of people on one side. Well, we said the population density was 0.6 people per square feet, right? Well, if we have 52,800 square feet, and the population density is 0.6 people per square foot, then uh, what we have here is 52,000 times 0.6. So if you have 52,000 times 0.6, you should get 31,680 people. Now that's for number of people per square foot, or excuse me, number of people on one side. And since that's only one side, we need both sides, right? So total on both sides, that's equal to, if we know that there's 31,680 people on one side, and we've got two sides, I just need to multiply this by two. And so I'm going to get 63,360 people total. Okay, so in both of these rectangles combined, there should be 63,360 people. And last problem, one rule of thumb for estimating crowds is that, two, is that each person occupies two and a half square feet. Use this rule to estimate the size of the crowd watching the parade along the one mile section of the route in the previous question. So we're going to assume x is equal to one person. Remember, we're creating another ratio here. One person for every two and a half square feet. Okay. Well, total number of people uh, is equal to 52,800. Uh, times 2 feet squared, and then one person per two and a half square feet. So remember, this is a ratio, or two ratios, and this is a proportion. So we've got this is equal to 52,800 over two and a half, or 42,400 people. 